good morning one and all hello friends uh, sorry for the interruption yesterday because of the some technical issues i could not complete my uh, presentation so here uh, in this morning i'm again uh, uh, you know i'm ready with my presentation and hope it will uh, it will not be interrupted uh, by some technical reasons and again i'll be talking about uh, you know shakespearean comedy and why it is necessary even uh, today Uh, before i start uh, you know this the presentation we should understand the source and background of of the comedy now before that before shakespeare the comedy was not reckoned as 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 a kind of a uh, you know as significant as a tragedy because you know this the tragedy uh, there are lot many lot many critics they are giving importance to the tragedy because of its uh, because of its gravity because of its uh, philosophy because of its inherent meaning because of its uh, several multi layer meaning uh, you know etc but there are very few critics there who are giving importance very you know to the to the comedy why because say you know aristotle in his poetics he has uh, you know given so many so much words for a tragedy but he hasn't given uh, you know so much words for the comedy as per as per this uh, you know for this as per this uh, definition of comedy is concerned according to the aristotle because without aristotle we cannot uh, understand uh, this genre uh, aristotle says that comedy is an imitation of men worse than the average a worse however not as regards any and every sort of fault but only as regards one particular kind the ridiculous which is a species of ugly so aristotle you know before i you know before you read this aristotle definition of the comedy you should not bear into your mind that aristotle is is uh, is is not giving importance to the comedy uh, you know apparently what he actually is saying look this there is a difference of a tragedy and a comedy the tragedy imitation of man of action the imitation of man who is high you know having a great height great status in the society as for example macbeth as for example hamlet king lear julius caesar these are othello these are these are the tragedy that look at the people who are who are in the high status but when you go for for the comedy comedy may be the characters may be the common the this comedy the character is not having a hierarchy maybe this this comic characters they can from the highest status but they also can be from the lower status but in shakespearean tragedies all the characters they are all from the highest status or the classical tragedies they are all from the highest status i'm not talking about the modern tragedies so this is the uh, you know uh, the comparison actually uh, we we have to keep on our mind now before shakespeare plunges into this into his world of comedy we should understand the what the world comedy is or what was before what was the convention of a comedy before shakespeare and there was a name you already know or probably you have uh, i you know i have given the lecture briefly uh, yesterday there is a name aristophanes who wrote frog so you know you know uh, uh, very well uh, there was a plotus and terence these are from rome they they are very much famous for their brilliant burlesque they are very much famous for their political satire they are very much famous for their extravagance of wit and they are very much famous for creating a buffoon so their criticism a their comedy is is not something a comedy which evokes a kind of a laughter easily their comedy is much more giving importance to the satire their comedy is giving importance to the to the correctiveness their comedy is giving importance to the uh, you know uh, to to the criticism their comedy is very much crude their comedy is very much harsh there are two kind of a satire one is horatian another is juvenile now there is their comedy is very much juvenile criticism it's very much harsh and crude so this comedy sometimes in their in their uh, 
in their place becomes a kind of a, a tragedy. Because if you are hurting somebody, even though you have a purpose to correct the follies and fouls of the society or the character, if you're hurting somebody, will he understand that he has got some fault and which needs to be, needs to be modified or needs to be uh, you know, uh, changed? Will he understand or will she understand? No, because she will be hurt or he will be hurt. So what's the purpose of the, you know, those comedy actually never miss. So the purpose of the comedy actually failed because it is not at all, not, not only to satirize the, you know, satirize the, the society, but you, at the same time, you have to evoke laughter and that's laughter should be innocent. The laughter should be innocent. The laughter should not be having, you know, tinged with any violence. The laughter should not be any tinged with any, 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 you know, any tears. So this old comedy, old comedy was like this. It's only satires. More or less, part and parcel, it creates some laughter. But that is not significant at all. So this is what the comic violence, which I, uh, which I wrote uh, in this PowerPoint, you can understand that. Now then, poor, you know, after that, there is a, there's a comedy which is called a new comedy in the hands of Mininda, another man who introduced the Romans first, the romantic, the romantic atmosphere, the romance, the boy meets girl, the theme actually introduced by Mininda in the romantic comedy. But again, the comedy was, again, comedy was not at all, uh, at all uh, coming out from that phenomena, which is called the satire. Satire was again a looming large all over the comedy. When you come to the Shakespearean comedy, you can find a kind of a new light, a new hope, a new world. Now, why we are, you, you, if you see the, uh, if you see that, uh, you know, uh, the presentation, you can find that I have, I have, uh, you know, uh, put it in the red letters. Why should he read Shakespeare in comedy when he is famous for his tragedies? Look this. This is the two world of Shakespeare. One is the tragedy, another is the comedy. If the tragedy, if the tragedy gives you the tears, the comedy must be giving you the smile, the laughter. It's the if I if I if I if I quote from the from the Blake word without reconciliation of the opposite, without contrary, there is no progression. So if you want to understand the life fully, you need to understand. The, what the tragedy is and at the same time what the comedy is because the both the thing and make someone arrive make someone mature so this is what the this is what the uh, Shakespeare actually wants to do in his in his comedy it's not only his purpose is not only to satirize the satirize the society his purpose is not only to satirize the 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 political upheavals because he's doing that in the in the tragedies already. So why he was presenting the comedy? Only to see the students, only to see the audience, a brighter side of life, which is needed even today. A brighter side of wonderful thing. A, brightest, a brighter kind of a, a kind of a world which is full of magic. It's a kind of a wonderland. Maybe uh, when I talk about the wonderland, uh, your imagination go back to the Alicia's wonderland. Yes, it is. He creates an Alicia's wonderland in all the comedy. Shakespeare was not uh, original in the sense that Shakespeare was very much a, a, a great reader. Shakespeare takes the help from Lily, the romanticism. Shakespeare takes the help from Green and other university wits, the idyllic and romantic background. But he was not at all copying as it is. Rather, he actually gives his originality by making it of his own. That is a pattern is Shakespearean comedy. That pattern is a kind of a journey, which is what? which is the, from the Apollonian to the Dionysian. What do you mean by Apollonian? Apollonian means the reason, the strict rules, to the emotion, to the individual freedom, to the, from the journey to the city, to the forest. So every comedy of Shakespeare, you can find these two set from the logic of reason to the, imagine, to the wings of poesy, to the wings of imagination. You know, it's something like Shakespeare actually uh, Shakespeare is, is uh, uh, you know, this kind of a set out a journey 
And when Shakespeare was writing this comedy, not only the characters are setting a journey from the logical reason to the to the wild of imagination. It is the it is the arts. It is the reader who also takes the journey from the reason and logic to the to the world of imagination. It's something like the world of kids as Nightingale. Everything is so good. Everything is so 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 fine. This is why we we need to read the Shakespearean comedy. It gives us another aspect of life. It gives us another purpose of life. It gives us a bright future. When the tragedy actually ends with the tears, when the tragedy ends with death, comedy ends with marriage. Comedy ends with love. That is much more important in a, in a, in a, in a literature, in a life circle, to understand the, what the life it is. So both the Shakespeare's tragedies and the comedy, they mix us together and they create a kind of a wonderful world for us to live in life for therefore dr johnson actually famously called the tragedy seems to be his skill but the comedy is to be his instinct that's much more important now the elements of shakespearean comedy when you go for the elements which are most important for a shakespearean comedy first thing is that the setting now you have gone through as you like it if you've gone through 12 night how do you find that the what the setting is? The setting is, as you like it, Forest of Arden and Twelve Night Illyria. If you read Twelve Night, sorry, if you read The Tempest, you can find the desert island. Now you do not find any geographical setting. No GPS can trace those uh, uh, those geographical setting. You cannot find that. You cannot even know where in the map you can find those setting. So why he created this setting and why these are very much important, important for us. Now look this, these settings are, are created by Shakespeare very purposefully. He created the never, never land. He created a world of imagination. And what he was doing? He was taking all the characters from the reality and placing them in those, in those places. In those forest of garden, in those Illyria, in those, uh, the desert rally in Tempest. What he was doing? He was not criticizing the characters. He was not criticizing the society. What he was doing? He was placing them in such a world, whether and in that world, so that they can understand their follies and the fibers, so that they can they can mend their characters, they can mend their personality, they can develop their personality. It's not something like that. He's criticizing. He was criticizing, you know, very uh, rubbish way, very harsh way, very crude way. He was not criticizing anybody. What he was doing, he was giving them a time. He was giving them a place. He was giving them a, uh, giving them a situation where they can change themselves, where they can purify themselves, where can they can understand their, uh, their faults, their mistakes, so that they can change themselves. And when they will be going out from that heaven, when they will be going to the society where they live in, they'll be a better man. And when they will be a better man in the society, they can create a good society. And when they can create a good society, they can create a good country. And when they create a good country, they, they can create a good universe. So this is why the Shakespeare actually wrote this comedy. See, this is why Shakespeare actually created this land. This is an imaginary land. In Shakespeare, what he did? Shakespeare makes us fact with the fiction. Reason? With the imagination. It gives freedom. So Shakespeare mixes fantasy with the reality. Shakespeare mixes fact with the fiction. Shakespeare creates an utopian state where the improbable incident happens. Have you watched the film Maleficent? I'm quite sure that you have watched the movie Maleficent. You have seen the world of Maleficent? It's a full of what? It's a full of fairies. It's a full of, it's a full of uh, uh, the animal who can talk. It's a full of the. It's a full of magical things, magical castments, the magical rainbows. It's a colorful world of Shakespeare. So this is a place for cure. This is a place for cure. This is a paradise which is needed. Shakespeare neither satirizes the society nor the characters. He doesn't laugh at them, but rather he laughs with them. He's never bitter, harsh, a crude like contemporary playwright like Ben Jonson. You know, Ben Jonson wrote. Every man in his humor, alchemist. 
according to the each and every character they will be having the humor something idiosyncrasies and according to those idiosyncrasies they actually they actually behave uh, like that and therefore they expose the society so ben jensen criticizes those personality ben jensen criticizes those idiosyncrasies of those characters so that he can change the society but shakespeare never did that though each and every character has got the humor though every each and every character has got the faults and the foibles but shakespeare never tells each and every characters that look this this is your fault this is your this is your mistakes you have to change it no shakespeare leave them for their own they roam in the world they learn from this world they change from this world and they go to the world and create a good society this is why the shakespeare comedy is important Shakespeare violates the rigid rules and the convention of the classical masters and emphasizes on the emotions, passion, imagination, and fancy. As I told you, Shakespeare, in in tragedies and in comedy, he never ever follows the unity of action, unity of time, unity of place. And in in, in as you like it, the the play starts with the court, and again it it moves the setting moves to the forest of Arden. there is several subplots so there will no single action and this story goes on beyond 24 hours so therefore shakespeare never follows any rules any regulation concerning of the unities shakespeare violates the unities because if you are if you are confined in the unities you cannot cannot get the imagination you cannot get the passion you cannot get the fancy but shakespeare comedies these three things is very much important now what another another uh, most important thing in in shakespeare comedies is the young lovers the young lovers they are struggling to overcome the obstacle they are love affair love is in the in the air in shakespeare comedies romance is important the romance between rosalind and orlando viola and orsino olivia and cesario or miranda and ferdinand in in way back in tempest these are much more important phenomena what do you mean by what's the importance of love is love is the only passion love is the only passion which can change the society and shakespeare is not exception in that though shakespeare wrote several sonnets but in that sonnet you can only find a kind of a mutual kind of love but shakespeare when you go for shakespeare's comedies you can find different facets of love you can find sexual kind of a love you can find sensuous love you can find platonic love you can find idealistic love you can find mutual kind of love you can find a love at first sight every characters every couple they have a kind of a, a different original kind of a love affair which is much more important so this is what the in a, each and every character they are struggling for to meet the girl or to meet the boy in in as you like it orlando goes to the rosaline but he didn't understand that the ganymede who is in this guy's uh, he is a she is a rosaline both of them love each other but they he didn't understand because she is in disguise so that twisted the plot so so orlando has got a kind of a a kind of a you know a kind of a problem to un, to to get his love viola 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 loves the horse you know but orsino love olivia so look this is the problem but viola is in 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 disguise of a man so he could not say or you know that he love you know she loves uh, orsino look this is the problem happens so they met several obstacle but at the same time at the end of the play they got their their beloved so there are different shades of love there are several characters are there which is uh, which is called uh, some you know uh, stock characters and thereby they are uh, you know progressing towards the subplots there are fools like tastone feste fools and clowns who have important role at least two can be seen in each of the play uh, as you like it and till night in our plays of shakespeare there are certain characteristics they are clumsy ridiculous slow witted the function of the clowns and the fool is to keep the comic action going throughout the play however the function of the clowns is not to not only to get the audience and the readers started laughing but also to show the important truth often ignored by the others the deepest secret hidden from the wise men may be revealed by a child a fool actually they don't appeal to the intellect but the emotion 
you can find the biggest philosophy of Shakespeare is spoken through the the mouth of a of a of a of a fool or of a clown. And as you like it, you can find Jackson saying, "All the world is a stage," which is no less, you know, uh, no less important than the than the soliloquy of Shakespeare's Macbeth, "Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow," or probably in Hamlet's "To be and not to be." In their in their tragedies, Shakespeare philosophizes the the life. At the same time, in Shakespeare in comedies, he also philosophizes the, the the life. And he was telling it the such a grave issue with a very comic sense, with a very comic situation. And therefore, we can understand better the philosophy which is spoken in the in the in, in, in the comedy, in comparison to the tragedy. Now his comedies are much more psychological and philosophical. The question of identity is everything. Who am I? A quest for identity gets resolved. Each and every character, maybe it's a Duke or Duke or uh, Duke Frederick, maybe it's a senior Duke, maybe Rosalind, Celia, Orlando, Oliver, Tustone, everybody they were going from the court to the forest of Arden for searching for themselves. Though apparently it seems that they are very happy, but they are not. They are searching for themselves. But the responsibility is given to them by the God. Who are they? So, Forest of Arden is become a kind of a place where they are searching each and everybody's soul. They are searching for their identity. In every comedy, the every people, every characters in a comedy, they are searching for their identity. They are searching for their existence, which is very important in a comedy. Uh, Another important thing in a, in a, a this comedy, the, though I should tell it in a later part, but still uh, my mistake, I have done it here. Uh, multiple marriage, celebration of marriage in the end. In every comedy, you can find the marriage is most essential thing. Why? When the love is there, the marriage should be coming. But why marriage? Marriage is nothing but what? Marriage gives a hope. Marriage gives the procreation. Marriage gives the future, the future generation. That is much more important. So marriage is for here, not for, for materializing the love. Marriage is for what? For, for hope, for bringing the hope to the society. So this is why the, their, every comedy ends with multiple marriage, not only one marriage, but multiple marriage. The bell of marriage rings in each and every comedy. Bulk of marriages happens. The characters are very different and colorful and imaginative. Every character, you can find the Macbeth, you know, uh, if you go for the tragedy, you can find that tragedy. Uh, Macbeth is uh, very much, he knows what it, it is, very much gray, very much, uh, you know, uh, psychologically mature. Uh, Hamlet is, uh, is having some plan. Hamlet is thinking. But you can find these characters of this, this comedies, every character comedies. Probably you can find that they are the, you know, they are the characters from the, some, some, uh, some imaginary land, what it is. They are very much uncommon, though they are common, but their their qualities are very much uncommon. They they, they are very much uh, you know lovable, though they have got a vices, but they are lovable. You know, there is another theme that is called a separation and union. In every comedy, you can find this separation and union. In in uh, in as you like it, you can find the Duke uh, Frederick is uh, separated from from the from the Duke, you know senior Duke Rosalind. And uh, he, her father, they are all separated. Rosalind and uh, Orlando, they are separated. In Twelve Night, Viola and Sevistine, they, they are the twin brothers and sister. They are also separated. So in the end of the play, you can find all the characters. They come to the reconciliation and they meet with each other. And therefore, the, the reunion happens. Even in Tempest also, you can find that Prosper is meeting with Antonio, his brother. Was the cause of the separate? So they are all meeting each other in the end of the in the end of the comedy. So comedy, you can find the unification or reunion of the characters. They are earlier they are separated from each other. Now they are coming back to each other, and they are uh, every uh, everything every the bad thing the bad feelings to each other get resolved. This is another most important thing is that appearance versus reality, or the disguise, or the mistaken identity. Now that actually gives you know that actually gives a light to the plot. The very much important. It's a twisting the plot. It creates a comic situation. 
twisting plot can create that comic situation. Now, Rosalind becomes Ganymede. Celia again takes another identity. Viola becomes Cesario. And that creates a kind of a misconception. That creates a kind of a misconception. And that twisted the plot. That creates a, a comic situation also. Orlando uh, doesn't know that Rosalind is, is, is the Ganymede. And he is going there and he was telling his, telling his, uh, his story that he, he actually loves that Rosalind and he doesn't know how to woo. At the same time, he's wing the Rosalind in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a right way. But he doesn't know that he is wing Rosalind. He's learning from the Rosalind. So that actually creates a, a comic situation. You can understand that. So, so mistaken identity, these guys, these are the most important thing. Now, another important thing beside this, which is very important, what is that? The appearance versus reality. Each and every character, how they appear, what they appear, they are not in actuality. Every character, they have got some, some hidden thing. And when they come that come in the, in the world of uh, the paradise, that is called the forest of Arden, or, or those never, never land of Shakespeare, the, all those hidden things comes to the foreground, comes to the place so that they can see themselves. So forest of Arden becomes a kind of a mirror, mirror to their hidden self. They can understand, they can see themselves, they can see their, uh, the hidden things, the hidden uh, mistaken uh, identity, the hidden uh, evil thing, and they, uh, they purify themselves, they can rectify themselves. You can find the, the heroines are much more important than the heroes. It is critic says that Shakespeare uh, in the comedies, he, uh, he has only the heroines, not the heroes. You can find Rosaline, Viola, Portia. They are better than the, the, the male characters in the play. It's not about the patriarchy. You know, Shakespeare has been often been criticized that in Shakespeare tragedies, you can find only the heroes. They are much more important. Heroine doesn't have any place. Lady Macbeth doesn't have any name. Uh, Desdemona has to die. Ophelia has to die. Ophelia doesn't have any um, any, any any biggest role in in Hamlet's play. So these are the criticism actually as Shakespeare is uh, is accepting uh, you know um, since long because you know he doesn't uh, you know give some some important role to them. But in Shakespeare comedies you can find it's totally different. It's an upside down. Rosalind probably uh, is the most important, it plays a very important role. Rosalind is, is a modern kind of a, a female who is talking to uh, Orlando in such a way that, uh, you know, in such a way uh, which, can be, which can be compared to the modern uh, feminist reading. So, therefore, you can tell that all the Shakespearean comedy, you know, comic, uh, you know, in the comedies, those are the heroines, they play a vital role. Uh, in, in, in the action also, or even the twisting the plot also. Even the Portia, uh, Portia Martin of Venice. Portia becomes the hero, not the heroines. So Portia is the, is the hero of this, uh, of Martin of Venice. Viola is the hero of this Twelve Night. Rosalind is the hero of this, of this, as you like it. Because through these characters, the, all the play, the, the you know, uh, the, the plays, the main action actually progresses or develops. And they're individual, they're spirited enough. They are highly intellectual, they are witty, they are imaginary, they are fanciful, they are, yet they are grounded in reality. So this is what the Shakespeare does with the, with the, with the, with the heroines in, in the comedy. Now the humor is much more important in the Shakespeare comedy. Shakespeare is, is seen to be uncomfortable to create comic situation in his tragedies, but is very much spontaneous while creating comic situation in comedy. You can find the Protocene in Macbeth. It seems to you, my dear, that it's an interpolation. Or probably several uh, criticism is also made that, that says that it's a, it's a criticism. Sorry, it's an it's a interpolation. So Shakespeare was not comfortable in introducing a comic situation in, uh, in, 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 in tragedy. But Shakespeare is very easy, very feel, very at ease uh, to introduce comedy or comic situation in uh, in, a, in, uh, in, in, in the comedy. It's very much spontaneous. And sometimes it seems that the comic situation in a comedy is much more independent to the main plot. Main plot doesn't have anything to do with. 
say it's very much uh, it's very much independent so this is called the comic catharsis now you can heard this say you can you know this catharsis what does it mean catharsis you can find in in tragedies evoking pity and fear you can associate like the same way in a comic situation when the imitation of some frivolous activities has been done creates a laughter and you are not only laughing with the characters you are also purging yourself purging your soul by laughing so it's a curing thing it's an another purgation another purification of the soul this another thing is that the the, the good versus evil in shakespeare comedy you can find the both the world exists one other is good another is bad in the court life, as, uh, as you like it, you can find that Duke Frederick is very bad. Oliver is very bad. Violence is there. But in the same time, when you go back to the forest of Arden, you can find that this everything is a good place. Everything is a is a good, you know, is a good, good thing. Everything is a is a proper place. It's kind of an utopia, it's analysis wonderland. So in Shakespeare comedy, both the world exists. It's a balanced. Here one can find the presence of good and evil in as you like it, Duke Frederick banishes his brother and usurps the kingdom. Oliver sets out to kill his own brother. Orlando out of his jealousy. But at the same time, you can understand that how the how the good thing triumphs over the evil. When Duke Frederick comes to the comes to the forest of Arden, suddenly he changes. When Oliver comes to the first of Arden, suddenly he changes because Orlando saves the life of the Oliver. So everything in this world is a mix of good and bad things. That is actually shown by, by presenting the, both the world, evil and the good in, in Shakespearean comedies. This one thing is more important in, in, in this, uh, this chapter is that, that forgiveness, mercy, compassion. This is the most important in a comedy. Even if you go for the Shakespeare tragedies, you can find there is a there is an avenge, there is a revenge, there is a nemesis, there is a death. But when you go for go for the comedy, you can find forgiveness. Forgiveness is all that is the Christian, uh, you know, the Christian morals. And Shakespeare is a devout Christian. Shakespeare believes in this. Shakespeare, the mercy is most important. The Porcius case, the 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 margin of Venice, you can find the Porcius pleading that mercy is the most important thing. I look. You just, you just uh, uh, fill, you know, you just give, forgive in turn. But the thing is that this, this, this mercy is important, the compassion is important, this forgiveness is important. Prospero forgives his brother. Likewise, Senior Duke forgives the Duke Frederick. Likewise, Orlando forgives the Oliver. And the play ends, and the comedy ends with the happy ending, the marriage bell. I, I, I discussed it in the earlier, I said, a better world for human. They created a better world to live in. They created a world which is full of fantasy. At the same time, it is not, it is not uh, separated from the reality. It's a mixture of reality and the fantasy. Therefore, I, uh, I stop here. I uh, hope uh, this lecture will help you out to understand uh, Shakespearean comedy as an as a not self. Uh, uh, thank you very much for kind listening. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, everybody.